Welcome to first episode of making Stardew Valley like game in Godo. So let's establish a groundwork. This tutorial will be slowly covering all the features of Stardew Valley style game. This tutorial will be using C Sharp as a programming language in Godo. So you have to download this version of the Godo and this Net SDK. After installing everything, if you open Godo Engine, you will see this screen. Simply press New Project. Here we set up the name and folder where we save the project. I do not recommend saving anything in your Documents folder, so I moved it into a more appropriate work folder. Okay, after opening the newly created project, set it up to be a 2D project by clicking here. We are ready to start. We need graphics for our farming guy. And I have sprite sheet for this. In the description you will see a link to download a character sprite sheet. Simply drag and drop to import the character sprite sheet. So let's make a character for the player. Delete the default node 2D and replace it with character body 2D, which you can find inside node 2D physics body 2D. This node will be responsible for managing the 2D physics body and it is specialized for characters, which moves around on the scene. Then let's draw the character sprite on the screen. Add a new node called Animated Sprite 2D. Then we need to reference the sprite sheet we will be using for our animations. So in the inspector window, we can reference our sprite sheet which we will be using. And double click it to open the animation setup window. First animation we will add to our character will be the idle animation. Click on this button to add animation frames from the sprite sheet of our farming guy. Set the size of the grid to match the size you see over here. So now you can click on the idle sprite to select them as animation frames. Good. And if everything set correctly, we should see our character sprite. It is blurry, so let's fix this. This is happening because the sprites we are importing is being compressed and filtered by the engine. So click on the farming dude sprite sheet. Inside set the preset to be 2D. Reimport the sprite. Press Ctrl S to save the scene we have implemented. Let's call it player. And let's test if our character is imported correctly by trying to launch the game. Godot will ask you to select the main scene. Confirm the selection and let's see. Our character is way to, to the side. Let's move him to, to the middle of the screen. Now he is too small. Open the project setting. So let's scale the inner window to make our character be more visible. This value is the size of the window on the screen. Meanwhile, this value scale up the content of that window. I think 4x will be fine. 
move the character to be visible on the screen. As you can see, he is still blurry. Set the filtering inside the rendering settings to be to the nearest point. And that should disable blurry filtering. Good. Now click over here to set up the idle animation to play on start. And we want to loop our animation, so make sure this is highlighted. Good, our character is animated. This series is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon. If you want to help me keep my channel going, you can find my Patreon in the description. You can be featured on the screen and get access to project files. Let's make our character move. Select character body 2D and add a new script. Which we will call player character move. Godot is kindly provided us with template for a rudimental character movement. But it's not suitable for us, because it is designed for 2D platformer style of the game. So, inside physics process callback, we will read our current velocity and store it into the variable. Then we read our input as a vector using input get vector method. This will convert four inputs into directional input. We will use default UI controls for now. Make sure when you are typing the names of the control input, you are typing them exactly the same. If you make a typo, your game might not work properly. We need to convert the input from the player into the velocity for our character by multiplying direction input by the speed. Create a new local constant variable called speed. The higher it is, the faster your character moves. Apply modified velocity back to the velocity of the node. Call move and slide to process the movement of the character. Let's test this. Good. I think we are moving a little too fast. Let's change speed to be 150. Good. With this done, we have implemented the rudimental move system. In the next episode, we will expand the animation of our character.